Hello, I'm Jason Skiller. This is Painting with Skill at Watercolour Lesson 12. This lesson looks at dry brush work. How to get your brush to the correct moisture to be able to apply dry brush marks. A lot of that is done in the palette. So, let's take some paint. Here I have some burnt umber. And we'll make it the usual way. Taking the paint, adding some water to that paint and letting it drip down into the base uh, trough of the palette. Now, this is basically a fluid wash of paint. So if I just take that and I place that upon the paper, then you get kind of a, a sloppy consistency to it. It's quite fluid and it's not what you're looking for to make dry brush marks. What some people do to achieve a dry brush mark is immediately go to just sort of drying out that fluid paint. So here I've placed some kitchen roll at the edge of the palette and I could just rub that on there until I make it dry enough to then place it on here. Basically, it lowers its tonal value. As you take weight out the paint on the brush, you'll find you'll get a paler and paler mark. So one of the ways to uh, avoid that might be that you make the paint darker in the first place so that when you dry it out, it becomes the tone you require. The other thing would be that if I just keep rubbing at it, then eventually uh, you'll probably find you almost have nothing there. But as I dry that to, to a point where it actually becomes dry, we start to get a slightly broken mark. So I've not really done anything specific to the brush hair shape yet, but you will be able to begin to get dry brush marks simply by literally drying and drying and drying uh, the brush. Another way to achieve this would be that instead of loading, loading it and then just drying it off, you move away slightly from it being in a, uh, a trough of wash of paint. Now, the paint at the top here, the burnt umber, is quite recently squeezed into the palette. So it's reasonably um, malleable. This effect is generally easier to achieve with squeezed out paint rather than paint that's dried because you can then alter the consistency of the paint. So I'm pulling that out and I'm going to make this probably not as fluid as that. It's a slightly drier mix. You can see as I'm just teasing in the paint, it's becoming a little bit more heavy and slower moving. Now, what I'm doing with the hair of the brush is I'm basically, the shape of the brush is kind of round, and as I tap it and tap it and tap it, it becomes flatter. I'm in, intending really to make the brush flat rather than it be a fully uh, rounded shape. So I keep pushing that flat because I'm wanting to open out the hair. What you're after is getting the ends of the hair to become further and further out until they basically slightly separate. And then as you drag it, as they separate, you'll get um, li little lines. So I push that flat and then I would suggest that you might take the excess off so you're removing some of the weight of the liquid by rubbing it on the side of the palette and then again push it flat. Now can you see now it's broadened out. So when I place it on the page I am getting a dry separated mark. So actually al although you'll see a lot of the time people will uh, demonstrate drying and drying and drying the paint on uh, a paper towel or a sponge or, or some other thing to get the dry brush mark a lot of it is actually just about how you manipulate the brush to basically flatten it out and not necessarily dip it in fully fluid paint. This mark also works rather well for a, a rather beautiful printing effect because what you've done is again you've flattened the brush out and when we're looking at those print marks in earlier videos, they make more of a full mark than it does when you dry it out. So if I just tap this, so let's have a bit of drum work on here, so I'm just sort of tap, 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 tap type thing, you can create rather a, a lovely effect. If I take the brush and now I, instead of holding it very, very close to the, uh, to the paper so that the woodwork is very low, I'm now going to lift it higher because what I'm after is getting this front piece of the hair the front tip to place down. So now I'm getting those little duck's feet that we looked at in the printing video, but they're probably a little bit more splayed. There's just a different feel, a little different edge to it. If I push that a little higher and just a bit more push movement forward, again, you can get rather a nice mark. The more I push this down and splay it out, the more separated and dry, you will get it. So, why would you use this stuff? Well, you might use it because you want to create an effect, some texture on something. Uh, for example, you might think, oh, well, actually, I could do something like that. And then I'll reload the brush and I could paint some marks up into this and this could quite, you know, make an, an attractive little tree type mark. 
this kind of mark making is only restricted your, from your imagination a way you can see it applied within picture making. The more marks you can make, the, the more uh, ammunition you have to interpret imagery and, and create something that's very personally yours. Okay, so let's go through that again. I've washed the brush through in the palette just to take the excess off. I'm now touching the paint again, reloading, pushing it flat, wiping the excess off on the side a few times, pushing it flat again, almost, it's almost a vertical movement down into the palette to open it out. Now, let's go horizontally. Remember when I was talking about painting um, straight lines, so I might move me, and I'm keeping the brush moving uh, with the woodwork in that direction. I can just drive that horizontally through. If I want to make the mark a little bit heavier, I might just push down a little bit whilst I do the dry brush, which would make that a more heavyweight mark. Let's imagine I wanted this to be kind of sparkly water, then what you're looking for is the dry brush and it looking like a little bit of the white of the, the page come through. If I wanted to the, uh, paint some clouds where I can, they're sort of fluttering across the sky and you've got the white of those clouds coming through on the paper, then what I could do is adapt this kind of mark making over here. I'm going to make a mark which is a little bit like a curve downwards. I'm just going to drag it and make some marks of varying length. And I could maybe do some where I dare to pull it a little bit longer. Or maybe turn the hair of the brush just to the side so I'm dragging but actually offering less surface. So this is a very rough but simple idea for painting um, some effects in the sky. Now I'm going to load with the watery paint again. So now I don't want dry brush. All I want is on here I'm going to paint a straight line again and I'm going to go up and paint a little bit of uh, headland. And then I'm going to come in and paint a bit more headland. And then I'm going to do this steadily coming forward with banks of headland. But to make it work a little bit more um, effectively, I'm just going to slightly increase the amount of paint that I put in my wash. So I add a little bit more water because I need a bit more water in here but then I need some more paint. Again, I'm not making a great trough of it because I'm dealing, trying to make this a little bit heavier each time. So let's make a bit of a heavier amount of paint. Heavier still, nearer it comes towards you, just a little bit darker. So we've got a whole series of very simply painted um, sections of headland as if you're looking out on a, a, a lake or a bay or, or whatever. And you can see how the dry brush will mimic the look of kind of sparkly water. So those little marks can make quite nice fluffy, softer marks in the sky. Again, this is just to show you some application of how that kind of mark making could be applied. As I said, dry brush work it's your imagination with any kind of painting. How far can you see the potential of these marks being used? And I found that the amount of uses for dry brush, both into wet in wet and wet on dry. So anytime you see somebody painting with wet paint on dry paper, it's called wet on dry. And when you see somebody painting with a wet surface in the paper, and then they're adding paint to that, usually wet, but it could be just damp, that's called wet in wet. Okay. Now, to give you a little bit more idea about kind of making very basic landscapes, the next few videos are going to look at stock skies. That'll be the next video, so that'll be video 13. We're going to look at uh, how to make a format of painting skies that you can repeat again and again and just slightly alter. So you may see this with a lot of demonstrators, people like myself who you'll see it shows or, or, or on um, video, they will often paint an adaptation of maybe two or three formats, compositions of sky. So if you can get yourself a stock sky, a format of painting a sky that you can reuse and reuse, it's very helpful when you're doing wet in wet and learning other skills to just fall back onto this simple composition of a sky. So that's what we'll look at in the next video. Then we'll work our way forward looking at how to create 
banks of landscape as I've just done, what's the theory behind it, so that you can make some very simple wet on dry tester paintings that will enable you to use a number of the marks that we've looked at in the previous videos and begin to pull that together. And when we've done that, we'll start to look, look at working on watercolour paper and, and moving forward learning wet in wet.